lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys new to my channel, welcome. Uh, my name is Pinky. For those of you guys that have been uh, knowing me for quite a while, welcome back, my lovelies. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the like button so that you guys can get notified of the most recent videos coming up. So we have major transformations, major shakeups, major changes that are going to be unfolding. Why? Well, we're going to be experiencing a full moon lunar eclipse on May 15th or 16th, depending where you're at, what part of the world. Um, and this is, think of it as a full moon on steroids, that it's going to be affecting you for the next coming six months. Of course, it's going to be in the sign of Scorpio, major transformative energy, very deep, very mysterious secrets coming out. Anyways, before we get into that, I do want to let you guys know, for those of you guys that are interested, I will be using the uh, Native Spirit Tarot here uh, for these readings. Uh, we're going to dive deep into each one of the zodiac signs, see what you can expect for the next coming months, what shakeups are going to be unfolding for you. And we're going to be using, like I said, these this deck that was sent to me. Um, this deck was made by Max Middenkopf, I believe. I believe you pronounce it like that. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, this deck is very beautiful. Uh, for those of you guys that work with ancestral magic, you're going to love this deck. Uh, it is very, very, not only beautiful, or the depictions are beautiful, I feel like it speaks very directly to your spirit guides, um, just off the bat. I just received the two days ago, I prepared them and I ritualized them so that we can do these uh, readings that we're going to do tonight. Um, but just a little feedback, the Native Spirit Tarot uses Native American Indian themes to convey the meaning of each card. We have warriors, maidens, fathers, mothers. Uh, we have uh, shamans. We have elder wise women and elder wise men up here throughout the deck. Like I said, uh, very beautiful deck. I feel very connected to it. If you guys are interested, the link will be in the description box below. For those of you guys that are barely learning, it also comes with the tarot guidebook. And just very quickly, as you guys can see here, uh, the deck is very uh, beautiful. Like I said, I just immediately connected with this deck. I hope you guys, if you guys do uh, pick these up, definitely connect with them because a lot, a lot of, especially those of you guys that do intuitive reading, a lot of messages come through with this deck. So I love it. Let's get into every single sign. Let's see what's unfolding for you guys. And um, like I said, if you guys are interested in this deck, you'll be able to find that in the link at the description box below. Let's get into it. Hello, my lovelies. Here we are again, ready to dive deep into what this whole lunar eclipse uh, means, how it's going to affect you for the next coming six months. This is going to be for all zodiac signs, and we will dive deep into what you can expect from the tarot cards as well. So for those of you guys that are definitely interested in this tarot deck, make sure to click the link on the description box below. You'll be able to find the link there. It's gonna automatically take you to this deck. You can make sure to put in the coupon, Pinky Pink Star Doll, capital letters, and you will be able to get a discount price. So let's get into what does this mean? How is this going to affect every single one of us in every different aspect of our lives, depending on where this placement is affecting you. So let's go generally, what does a lunar eclipse in Scorpio mean? Um, it's happening at 25 degrees of Scorpio on May 16th at 1.13 a.m. This could be the 15th of May, depending on what part of the world you're in. This eclipse has some very serious turning points energy. It is bringing our attention to what what is complete what is over, what is ending. More than anything, it is about what is releasing. The moon in Scorpio and the sun and Taurus are each at 25 degrees, receiving on exact square from Saturn and Aquarius at nearly 25 degrees. Very powerful energies, you guys. It could feel like you're navigating through this feeling of intensity and pressure. This is a total lunar eclipse, energetically powerful. The last time we had Scorpio lunar eclipse at 25 degrees was back in 2000, uh, 
I want to say 2003 as well as two or you could have experienced more of that energy in 2013. Uh, so take a minute to analyze and revisit what was going on in your life at that point in time. What was developing back uh, back then when that uh, full moon lunar eclipse happened. It is an energy that comes through very strongly. And then it puts uh, or in unfolds for a minimum of six months until the next eclipse. So you want to look at what house your Scorpio is placed at. This is the house placement that you want to locate. You want to identify this because it's the environment of life for the energy that is coming through and that Scorpio's energy is strongest for you. Uh, keep in mind Scorpio is emotions. It's under the surface and there is an intense emotional clearing uh, that is happening complete with karma with certain obligations connections thanks to your sharing with others sharing resources as part of Scorpio getting clear on a new emotional truth this also means uh, that for some of you guys it's coming to surface what needs to go and what needs to end so that you may have room and space and energy for what is emerging in alignment not only in this full moon um, with the lunar eclipse, but it's also a indirect connection with your south node. South node is always about endings. Uh, it is about past lives. It is about past experiences. Um, you may start to experience seeing old parts of your former self, of the previous versions of ourselves in the Scorpio uh, or in the Scorpio part of your chart. And now you're seeing how you've evolved, how you've changed, how you've grown, assessing a past version of what is no longer in alignment with your truth. Uh, you may be feeling a bit confused as well. Uh, why? Because we have square that is happening with Saturn and Aquarius. This is our mind. Aquarius is the mind and the connections we have with other people and the world at large. This could be community. This could be groups of people. Uh, people you work with, energies with people you are connected with. And Saturn in Aquarius is really bringing your attention to what is it that you need to do based on your own energy, based on where you're going, the new version of yourself. Remember, Aquarius is the sign of social networks, of friends and groups, the collective. But Saturn is also the planet that wants to remind you that you have to have the strength to go ahead alone in certain things. There's things that we're meant to do on our, on our self or on our, what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> on ourselves. Um, there are certain paths where no one can assist us or help us. It is something that we must walk alone, uh, which then can free up others as well, uh, where there is a need to separate your energy out. Uh, if you've been holding or caring a lot for others and ultimately maybe it's holding you back or it's holding them back uh, from what they need to do, where they need to follow their own individual path. By standing in the strength of your own energy is where you shine the brightest. That's the only way we can get back. It's kind of like that saying goes, you can't do for others if you can't do for yourself or you can't take care of others if you are unable to take care of yourself. We are also going to be experiencing Mercury in retrograde from May the 10th all the way to June 3rd. Mercury retrograde, there's going to be some type of disruption in communication, Gemini rules, uh, communication. By phone, paperwork, it, it's, it's communication that is being disrupted. Um, this can also affect vehicles as well. This is speaking directly about delays with miscommunication, waiting for paperwork or legal matters, uh, a check, contracts, um, if you're trying to purchase a home or trying to buy a car, all of those things can get delayed. Um, so what this lunar eclipse, the major theme is what's working and what's not working and making decisions based on that, whether it's willingly or you'll be pushed to make those decisions. If you have any planets from the 20 degrees to 29 degrees or any planets at zero degrees, this eclipse is hitting your chart sun and rising is what you should be looking at in this video um, as it's going to uh, as a whole it's going to impact or you'll be able to associate the messages and relate them to what's unfolding or what will be unfolding for you 
All right, my lovely. So without further ado, let's get into each one of the zodiac signs. Okay, my lovelies, here we are. Let's get into it. We're going to begin here with Aries. So Aries, the lunar eclipse is in your area of resources. That's where the decision making is going to be happening. The moon is highlighting where you can put your resources or how to work the resources that you currently have. The square that's happening from Saturn, uh, which is the challenge and or obstacle, is showing you the uncertainty. It is uh, the fears uh, or showing or coming up or experiencing some type of fear in regards to the uncertainty of the future regarding your finances. Um, so you're, if you're currently feeling like you're lost or like you're not sure um, how you're doing in regards to your finances, in regards to the future, that's a theme that's going to be coming up for you guys. Um, and, and Aquarius, of course, being with friends and colleagues and those around you, it is also making you feel or it will push you to flat out them uh, relating messages to you or telling you that your ideas are not going to pan out. Mars and Neptune in your house of spirituality and the connection with the universe is challenging you to dare to imagine. That's the message here. It is about seeing the bigger picture. Step out of your comfort zone. Imagine, imagination is key right now, i.e. manifestations through visualization, meditation, journaling, prayer, etc. You can align and co-create, manifest. If you're going through confusion or uncertainty, write the questions that you're currently experiencing or the doubts that you may have and the answers that you're wanting to receive and put them in your pillowcase as an example to be able to dream the answer, to be able to receive the messages from the spirit realm. This is perfect timing to do so, Aries. So when we're talking about love and romance, sun is making sextile to Mars. There are opportunities, but because Mars is in your hidden house, it may mean that you can find yourself having a secret relationship or that this person coming in can be someone you have dreamt about, you have fantasized about, or finally meeting this love in person. Uh, but something about it is connecting to the hidden or the manifestation coming to reality. It is a sextile happening, so this means you need to take action. You need to move forward in order to be able to see the results. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now we're going to get into the cards. Let's see what spirit has for you guys, what messages uh, we can relate to you guys for this coming uh, lunar eclipse. All right, spirit gets ancestors and archangels. Please relate to us the messages that Aries needs to hear at this point in time in regards to this lunar eclipse that we will be experiencing. Uh, what are the messages for them at this point in time? Okay, wow, those cards just definitely flew out. So we're starting off here with the high priestess. So the high priestess is the knowing. This is the connecting with your spirit realm. This is connecting with your ancestors. This is connecting with um, divinity. With divinity, uh, This is all about listening to your intuition right now, Aries. That's going to be a major part. Not only listening to your intuition, but connecting deeply uh, with the spirit energy or the energy of the spirit realm. That's how you're able to tap into manifestations. You're very highlighted um, to, to be able to manifest and to even, you know, um, blow your mind when doing this. But it is about thinking outside the box and again, using visualization techniques or journaling to be able to manifest, to be able to go through this um, without really having the self-negative talk. Now, your next card here is the two of arrows. Um, so again, it is about moving forward. It is about um, making the decision. And the two of swords is all to do with the wanting to take a moment to really seclude yourself. It has more to do with finding the answers within. So again, highlighted here with the high priestess, they're telling you, uh, shut out the world, you know, shut out the noise, um, find your inner truth. That's going to be your GPS. That's going to be what's going to be your navigating system for this month and for the months to come. Very important for you to do so, Aries. 
All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed. Now let's go to the next sign. All right, Taurus, this lunar eclipse is happening in your house of relationships. There is some sort of decision that you're making about a close relationship that could be your partner, it could be close friends, or maybe this is a business arrangement, some sort of partnership or collaboration, maybe a mentor, some important relationship you're making a decision about. Now, Saturn challenges, um, challenges your chart, so this means that you may be overly stressing yourself, worrying about what others may think or say when you make this decision. That is affecting what you're wanting to do. There's also a chance that this will be affecting your career in some way. Maybe it's uh, that you're thinking about moving to a different country, a different city for a better job, and or, uh, and maybe your partner doesn't agree with it, or it could be that your partner's the one that's being offered a different job in a different city or country where distance is involved. Something about how people see you or your career is the block that you're going to be experiencing, the blockage um, that Saturn is going to be affecting, almost a feeling of being, um, being powerless because of circumstance. But Mars and Neptune is in your area of friendships, also groups and organizations. This means that there are people that you may be getting feedback um, that maybe have made uh, or gone through the same situation that you're currently going through or have experience on what you're currently going through and can give you feedback of how to do it or friends that will support and help you through this, um, through your insecurities or fears that maybe you may be experiencing right now. Now, when it comes to love and romance, Vi uh, Venus is not making an aspect to Mercury. There is a little bit of a disconnect happening. As an example, if you've been single for a while and you've been wanting to meet or put yourself out there, you may be consciously aware of that, but your mind or energy is going elsewhere. Other things that are unfolding in your life, this is where the disconnect happens. It's almost like wanting to date, but also feeling like, oh, I have too much on my plate right now. I don't have time for that type of energy. It's a, it's a, a tug and pull type of thing. Um, now, again, this is where the disconnect is happening. Uh, if you're in a committed or long-term relationship, there's a feeling of not understanding each other or not being on the same page, not being in sync. That decision is about your love partner uh, figuring out how you're miscommunicating with each other and how to be better able to communicate. All right, my lovelies, now let's get into the cards. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys. Spirits, what are the messages? What are the two cards that you want to communicate at this point in time for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the messages you have for them today? In regards to this lunar eclipse that we're going to be experiencing, what changes, challenges? Where opportunities will be coming for them. All right, here we go. Now we have the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups is wish fulfillment. It is feeling emotionally balanced or being able uh, to release yourself from the negative self-talk, uh, understanding or knowing that you deserve to be happy or that um, you've gone through enough uh, life challenges or experiences where it's made you wiser and you can implement that wisdom moving forward. Now, the next card here is the Queen of Arrows. So it's about believing in yourself, Taurus. It's about taking action um, for the coming months. And one thing I do want to mention, it is being confident about good things happening in your life, Taurus. This is something that is coming through very strongly. Uh, so if you have a tendency, as an example, if things are unfolding in a very positive way and there is a fear that something may go wrong or a fear that you're waiting for the, you know, the next shoot to drop, um, try the best you can to redirect that energy towards positive, uh, positivity and optimism. That's going to be a challenge as well as a blessing if you're able to do that. All right, my lovelies, let's go to the next uh, to the next sign. 
Okay, Gemini, this lunar eclipse is happening in your house of daily routines, health, and how you care for yourself. It's becoming more self-aware of the need or desire to take better care of yourself, your schedule, your everyday life, and whether you need to bring in some help in those areas. Where Saturn is becoming a challenge is in the area of information. So you may be experiencing feeling like you don't have clarity about a situation or like you don't have the full information or feeling like you cannot find the truth. But Mars and Neptune are in your house of expertise, which means where this challenge is coming, uh, you may also find someone that comes into your life that can give you some type of guidance, some type of feedback or information that is coming from an experienced individual. Uh, someone that has expertise on that subject or a mentor for some of you guys. It is being able to get the information. This is this also opens the door to making a very strong connection with someone uh, that may come into your life um, for the coming months um, where there is almost like a, it's kind of like a, like a chart connection uh, with someone else that would be positive. Sometimes it could be in the negative aspect. It could be connected to karmic uh, partnerships or karmic connections, a familiar from a karmic past life, someone that's coming in that may be linked or connected to your past lives. The key focus here is understanding. Do you have clarity? Does it make you feel better, that connection, the information that they're relating to you? Is it providing uh, some type of uh, or assistance in regards to your growth? If this is a positive individual that will assist you in some shape, way, or form, um, then that's a beautiful thing. However, if it is the opposite, the opposite and they start to make your life more difficult, then understand at that point in time that you're experiencing or dealing with a karmic situation where there is a major need for release um, that is happening. So don't try to hold on to them or force them uh, in this time frame of disconnection. Um, so what I mean by that is you may uh, experience some type of connection where you feel like you're very relatable to this person or uh, like you guys connect on a very deeper level, almost a feeling of knowing each other. If they're bringing positivity to your life, then that's amazing. If it is a karmic, the way you would know it's a karmic is because they're making your life more difficult. And in doing that, um, we go back to the needing to have to release um that connection so uh, if it were to turn into something romantic for example and it doesn't work out but there is this deep inclination to go chasing after this person it is crucial and very important to let go of that connection because that karmic cycle whatever connection or whatever karma was um, between you two it is finally coming to its conclusion but you must let it go you must surrender to what's unfolding okay now, when we're talking about the subject of love and romance, Mercury is not making an aspect to your Venus. However, the majority of the planets are above your horizon, so it's very easy to be seen. Um, but your head may not really be into the game because the moon and the lunar eclipse is happening below the horizon. So it's a feeling of being a bit confused, wanting a connection, desiring some type of deep connection, but also feeling like you're better off being alone. Um, so that you can try to figure out the puzzle of your life or what's going on in your life right now. Uh, however, friends are very prone to introducing you to someone around this time frame. So again, uh, just be cautious of those connections that they're speaking about that is directly connect connected to karmic, okay? All right, let's see what is the major focal message here for you guys with the tarot cards. Gemini. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is it, the message that we want to relate at this point in time for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this lunar eclipse? If you guys enjoyed these videos, definitely don't forget to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. <clears throat> so you guys can get notified of the newest videos going up. Okay, so what we have here is, again, it, it, it's the nine of wands and what this is implying is everything that burdens you, Gemini, everything that you've been carrying, that you've been dealing with, 
um, even carrying other people's burdens or other people's expectations, it's time for you to completely release yourself from that, to completely let go of that. You've gone through the difficulties or the challenges of life. You've it's to the point where you need to align yourself to a higher vibration. So again, it is letting go of past experiences, um, whatever it is that is not working out at this point in time, it is time to throw in the towel when we're talking about connections, when we're talking about uh, romance or relationships or even relationships with you know partnerships in regards to business if it's not going well and you feel like you're the one that's doing the most at this point in time it's time that you start to look at the bigger picture are you better off you know completely coming to the end of that relationship that business partnership when it's to relationships have you gotten to the point that you've overextended yourself and if so it's time to walk away and give up on that why because you have to understand scorpio's energy is all about um you know going deep within our emotions and feeling it no matter how hurtful or how difficult it is there is a rebirth that is happening and in order for that to happen you cannot continue doing the same mistakes or you cannot continue doing or keeping on life the way you have up until now when we're talking about things that are no longer serving you now the next card here is the two of arrows so this is the two of swords again finding yourself it is about tuning everyone out tuning everything the noise everything everyone's opinions um it is completely secluding yourself to the point of meditating of finding your sacred space your peace your balance and making decisions based off of that so in in I guess on the grander scale of things is not being irrational when when it comes to decision making it is about taking the time to clear your mind to take a deep breath to analyze and then be able to execute whatever decision you may uh, choose to decide or how you choose to decide okay my lovelies all right let's go to the next reading okay cancer you guys are experiencing this lunar eclipse in your area of creativity fertility and children also the house of investments you will be making decisions or changes in these areas you may have a big decision to make about your children about fertility about adding kids to the family or working on a creative project however saturn's challenge here or saturn's um obstacle that you must overcome is presenting you the challenge of affecting or being directly connected to the resources uh, so you may feel like you don't have the energy or the money uh, there is a feeling of lacking in something from this process um, so again as an example it could be a conversation that comes up regarding fertility regarding having kids adding more kids to the family uh, etc but then having to step back and realize, well, can we actually, is this actually uh, practical? Are we able to take on that responsibility, whether it's um, your kids going off to college and having to, uh, something that is very uh, directly connected to children and expenses and your finances. So again, uh, it could be as simplistic as having a conversation about wanting to uh, grow your family um, and then having to approach it from a very practical standpoint. Are we capable of, are we ready? Um, you know, Saturn is the, it is a planet of discipline. So um, it's about figuring that out through this process. Now for others of you, keep in mind, we do have Mars and Neptune in the house of education and teachers. So that's where you can find the help or assistance or guidance. Um, with this challenge that may come up in the next coming months. A very emotional aspect, I may add, um, because this lunar eclipse is happening in the house of children, something that is near and dear to your heart, uh, that you don't want to get caught up in the mentality of not having enough or not being enough, not being able to deal with certain things uh, or the responsibility that comes with that. So you want to find a, a way of strategizing and through the ninth house where is where you have the mars and neptune a teacher or a person um, that will serve you as a guide will come into your life at the right point in time now when we're talking about love and romance 
this moon is, uh, is making the sextile to Pluto. There is an opportunity and Pluto being in your house of relationships, this means that uh, you do want to push yourself forward. Whenever we experience sextiles, you have to take an initiative. You have to take an action in order to make something happen or something to unfold. So you have to communicate, put yourself out there, make that profile or that dating app, putting yourself out there into the world or communicate to your friends that you're willing to be set up or that you're willing to be open to online dating. Something that is thinking outside the box, but it's also uh, you taking action to move this process along. It is definitely outside your comfort zone. However, uh, it is a good time to do so. So with that being said, let's go into the messages that they may have for you at this point in time. Spirit guides, what are the messages that we have here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is it that they need to know for this coming lunar eclipse in Scorpio? What messages do you have for them? Give me two cards that represents the message, energy, or dynamic. Okay. So we have here the Queen of Cups and the Two of Wands. My lovelies, it is uh, amazing, right? The message here um, with the Queen of Cups and the Two of of wands here so what does this mean this is talking about being open to the possibilities this is having an open heart an open mind taking new approaches two of wands is expansion it is growth it's time so my lovelies i hope you guys enjoyed let's go to the next sign okay leo you will be experiencing your lunar eclipse in your area of home and family this includes your dwelling this is where you're currently living. Um, some decisions to be made about where you live, how long you're gonna live there, are you selling your home, or something about the family in regards to the home. Um, so you can expect this type of dynamic to unfold for the next coming months. With, uh, with Saturn, um, the challenge here, uh, for home and family is that uh, for some of you guys, it could be that somebody that is close to you uh, and or your life is either disapproving of decisions that you're making and it feels like everything else is overwhelming. However, we see Mars and Neptune helping you out here in this area of resources. So you have many resources or ways to deal or navigate through these issues that may come up regarding the home and or family. It's a good thing when dealing with stuff of resources, uh, Neptune is influencing to do some type of visualization, making a list of all the possibilities, the things that you want to attract, the outcome that you're looking for, or what you're desiring. So it could be a bit of a challenging position because again, it is about perhaps not being in complete balance or in complete understanding with those around you, with your family members, or with people that you live with. It could be that you've been living with a roommate, for example, and it's getting to the cusp of, you know, that that moment where you guys are just triggered and just cannot stand each other. Or it could be that you're having a lot of miscommunication or misunderstandings with someone that you live with, with a parent, uh, with your kids even. It's a feeling of frustration and a feeling of it's time for me to make a different plan. It's time for me to either move out, start to look somewhere else that type of energy. But again, remember, you do have the resources. Uh, you will be able to, whatever decision you decide to make, it is going to come out to the best of your interest. However, it is about patience right now. So it is about not completely vibrating from a negative energy, more so to try to be optimistic and positive. Now, when we're talking about love and romance, the sun is making a sextile to Jupiter. There is an opportunity to meet someone um, or someone that you may know that you may be dealing with already. Jupiter is in a new sign. This could mean meeting someone quite different from what you're used to or from the people that you've dealt with in the past few years. This is a very, um, very vibrant type of energy with a sextile. When you take action, amazing things can happen. Also for some, uh, that are very much into religion. Jupiter is now in that house of spirituality and religion. So you may want to be more proactive in your community, going to you know regular church, uh, to mass services. For example, all of that, uh, you might meet someone there. So 
now it is the perfect time basically to uh, dip your toes into the water and test the waters <laughs> all right my lovelies now okay let's see what the messages are for leo sun moon rising and venus what are the messages for leo sun moon rising and venus okay let's see what your messages are here we have the four of coins and temperance so it is about balance it is about figuring out um expenses it is about your resources um four of pentacles often indicates you know being a bit reserved when we're talking about finances when we're talking about money um and and saving or or, or being practical in the approach of uh, not overspending or not spending unnecessarily with temperance it is about balance it is about finding the perfect balance here so again be mindful of that my lovelies all right okay let's go now to the next reading okay virgo this lunar eclipse is happening in your area of contracts thinking process as well as communication it rules siblings neighbors uh, so little disruption in that area. You may be experiencing you have to make a decision uh, or maybe something that you've been mulling over. Uh, this could represent even um, the dealing with or thinking about uh, something that you've been going through for quite a while um, that has to do in connection with contracts or metaphorically sitting on a contract, trying to decide how to negotiate for what you want or sharing the news or information about the decision you're going to be making. So again, this could have a lot to do, uh, for example, if um, you're at a point where you feel like you are about ready uh, to move out, you may find it a bit difficult uh, expressing yourself or telling your roommates or you know, even speaking up to your parents or uh, even a partner. Uh, you may be challenged right now and there may be like a, a feeling or an incline to want to expand um, and go it alone for a bit and it's almost like a, a wanting to make the decision but not knowing how to go around it um, so saturn uh, is presenting the challenge in the sixth house everything to do with um, taking action or making the decisions of sharing information uh, about the changes you're about to do uh, whether it's uh, sharing this information with friends with neighbors or people around you or again a partner connections romantically um, and it's a, a feeling of experiencing tiredness a little sick to your stomach or like you don't want or don't have the energy to follow through uh, in the past with mars and neptune they will be assisting you in this process so it is in your house of relationships and partnerships and connections which means someone is willing to help you out through this process someone is coming around to assist you the purpose here or the challenge is to be able to uh, be open in asking for that help why uh, because Scorpio uh, the lunar eclipse in Scorpio uh, you may be very inclined to try to figure it out or navigate through certain things without asking for help or keeping things to yourself but in this process what they're encouraging you is to reach out to a trusted friend uh, to be honest with your partner or to be completely honest and transparent with those that you are living or those that are around you uh, it is about trusting and communicating essentially what you need and what is necessary at this point and time now when we're talking about love and romance mercury is not making an aspect to saturn plus mercury is in retrograde so you may only be thinking or reminiscing or being nostalgic about the past about someone you've dated in the past and wanting that person to reach out however mercury is in retrograde uh, retrograde with no other aspects it's not the right time um, at this point in time for you to reach out your energy may not be balanced so if you're thinking about someone from your past or fixated on a past relationship you may want to be um, you may want to be reaching out to them um, what they're telling you here is take a step back you don't want to act based on impulse it is important um, at least until uh, mercury goes direct uh, however don't be surprised if people from your past or people that you've dated in the past um, 
that you weren't necessarily interested in, um, they may be reaching out, calling you, uh, reaching out, texting you, trying to see if, if, if you guys can connect again. Um, and it's a feeling of just, it's just not clicking between you two. Um, if it didn't connect then, it's not going to happen now. It is, however, they may be going through this type of challenge as well, where they may be very inclined to reaching out um, based on impulse. So again, um, if you're feeling lonely, Virgo, and someone hits you up from the past, you weren't really in it. You're not going to be really in it this time around. And if you are dealing uh, with wanting to reach out or being tempted to reach out to an ex-partner or someone from your past, Take a step back, at least wait two weeks. Uh, hold back, Virgo. You don't want to have regrets. <laughs> All right, let's get into your reading. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys. What uh, messages do we have here for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Give me the two cards that uh, need to communicate to Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to this lunar eclipse, challenge, opportunity, or message. All right. And we have here the Ten of Swords and the Two of Cups. Wow. So what they're telling you here is whatever has come to a conclusion, whatever endings are unfolding for you, it is time to completely let go of that. Let go. Stop holding on. Uh, there is literally better opportunities out there for you or love uh, surrounding you or coming towards you. Um, even though you may not see it at this point in time, it is unfolding. You guys keep in mind, lunar eclipses literally affect us for the next coming six months. So if you're holding on to something that hasn't been working or isn't working no more, completely release yourself from those chains. Free yourself to be, be able to move forward and propel you uh, to your future and to something that is much more uh, in alignment with you, Virgo. All right, my lovelies. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's go next to uh, Libra. Okay, my lovelies, Libra. You are experiencing the lunar eclipse in your house of money, possessions, and self-worth. This is where the decision is going to have to be made. Um, you're making a decision about money. You're making a decision about the stuff that you own or how your sense of deserving is, basically. If you're struggling with a money decision, whether to buy something, whether to find ways to earn more money or take responsibility for managing your finances, you are being challenged uh, with Saturn's energy, your house of risk and kids and creativity. So it can feel something like wanting to give more to your kids and that's leaving you a bit shorthanded with your finances or the feeling of having to do some money management and uh, you may be challenged as well with wanting to do something in the creative aspect uh, versus working a job that perhaps you're feeling like you're not that passionate about. Uh, but it is bringing you or, or it's pushing you uh, to aim towards stability uh, more directly with your finances. It is that at this point, uh, it is about looking at the bigger picture. What are your priorities? What's the most important thing for you right now? Um, Looking at your Mars and Neptune, that is in your area of work and routine, major key here is to slow and steady is what wins the race, basically. It is shifting your daily routine so that you're in the last um, <clears throat> risky circumstance regarding your finances. As an example, uh, you may start to rearrange certain things in your life, like uh, eating more at home so that you're not spending too much going out. It is about thinking of the future uh, and the long-term goal here is to, uh, like I said, if you're feeling right now like there's, a, there's something that you're wanting to pursue in the creative aspect, but perhaps you feel like you're not that financially stable or like you, it would take some type of investment, some type of money for you to start something. Um, ultimately, what they're telling you is it's not that you're not able to uh, progressively move towards that. It's being practical in the approach. Like I said, sticking with that nine to five job um, that perhaps is not ideal for you right now, but it is about not making risky moves. Like an example, um, 
wanting to go in there to your nine to five job and quitting in the moment because you feel that pressure of Saturn and that frustration um, only to find yourself in a more difficult situation. Now you're out of a job. So what they're telling you is it doesn't mean that you're not able to make it happen, Libra. It's about being practical right now and sticking to what is working for you. Uh, but ultimately putting the intention and the goal to work towards leaving that situation into something much more stable. Um, so be careful with that. Now, when we're talking about love and romance, Venus is making a semi-sextile to Uranus in the area of new love, um, which influences, uh, or I should say, which the influence of Uranus, uh, this is the time to do it because business is in your um in your house of relationships, there's an opportunity to make a new connection that actually can become a real uh, stable long-term relationship. You don't necessarily want to miss this opportunity. Um, but again, we go back to that of because it is a semi, a semi uh, sextile, you may feel like you have many other things on your plate right now or like you're a bit distracted. It's not the easiest of aspects, but it's almost like a feeling of being pulled towards different directions, but it is perfect timing for new love. If you're looking for growth, if you take a step out outside of your comfort zone, you can really have uh, really good luck when it comes to meeting someone new because Jupiter is in your house of relationships and uh, the Venus is there as well, which is your ruling planet. Uh, so we have all of these elements currently influencing and assisting you. Um, for those of you currently going through Jupiter's return, as an example, uh, Jupiter is entering your sign and Venus is there. This is talking about, uh, especially if you're female or female energy, a uh, great chance and opportunity to meet the person you're going to marry. So uh, very powerful energy here for you Libras. Okay, we're going to be looking into the cards. Let's see exactly what is unfolding. What are the messages for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What two cards are speaking about the challenge for this lunar eclipse? The opportunity for Libra or the challenges. What is unfolding for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this lunar eclipse? Like I said, if you guys are enjoying these videos, definitely comment, like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, so you guys can get uh, the most recent videos going up. We have two cards here that flew out, so we're going to take them. And we have the Three of Wands. Three of Wands, and uh, we have here the Seven of Arrows, which is the Seven of Swords. So again, the Three of Wands is all about expansion. It is all about growth, but it, it's growth within the time frame of being patient. So again, we go back to that of Saturn's energy. Uh, you may feel like you're being pressured, Libra, like you're getting to that pressure point where uh, you may be pushed to make um, an irrational decision. It's a decision based off of stress. Um, so be, if you feel in that, you know, in the next coming months, if you feel like you're getting to your boiling point, the best thing to do is to take a step back, to take a deep breath and to remind yourself um, to stick to what is working right now. It doesn't mean you have to stay there or you shall remain there. It just means that you're taking the practical approach. We give the example of that, of uh, being at a job where you're not no longer comfortable. You feel like it's draining the soul out of you. And one day you just may be very inclined to just walk in there and be like, I quit, I'm done. This could be with relationships as well. This could be with family, friends, people that are just relying too much on you. And there's this, this, like I said, this uh, brewing type of energy where you're getting to the point of, uh, it's a ticking time bomb. Um, but what they're telling you is whenever you get to that point where you feel like you can't hold back, the way to go about it is to take a step back, to remind yourself, I'm not here um, for the long run. This is not what I, you know, what I intend to do is stay here for the next five years. No, I am, you know, sticking to this because it's working, whether it's because you're getting financial stability from it or whatever it is. Um, but remind yourself that you're holding on to that until something better comes its way. You don't want to make decisions based on stress or based on 
uh, the pressure that you're experiencing. And with the Seven of Swords, don't lie to yourself, okay? So again, we go back to that of uh, getting to the point of being frustrated and being ready, or I should say, you're to the point where you're becoming overly emotional that you're gonna make an irrational decision. Um, don't play yourself in that. Don't do that. Don't lie to yourself and tell, you know, I'm walking in there and quitting the job. Uh, now I find myself without a job, without finances, without being able to pay my bills. So you end up putting your position or putting yourself in a position that is worse than when you started. So again, be practical, be mindful of the decisions that you're going to be making. Um, when you're feeling overwhelmed, the best thing to do is to uh, clear your mind, ground yourself, uh, take a deep breath and just remind yourself you're doing it right now because it's working out. Um, that you're moving on to much better, grander things. Uh, it's just timing right now for you guys. So uh, keep that in mind, Libra. All right, my lovelies, let's go now to the next sign, which is Scorpio. <laughs> okay, Scorpio, here we are. This lunar eclipse, obviously I don't need to tell you guys, it is in your sign of Scorpio. Uh, part of the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses over the next year and a half, uh, that we're going to be experiencing. So you are directly being hit with this eclipse and uh, the solar eclipse we just experienced two weeks ago and the future eclipses that we're going to be having for the next year and a half, like I mentioned. This is all about shifting your life path. At this point in time, this is going to uh, be a very deep diving uh, of emotions, trying to uh, navigate uh, and figure out what you feel you should be doing at this point in your life. What you want to do, that means that there are major doors that are going to be closed for you, uh, as well as major opportunities and doors that will be opening up wide open for you guys because of the Scorpio's energy. Obviously, you like a bit of control, and this is going to be a very daunting experience for you guys. Uh, you may already be experiencing this, uh, it's a bit nerve wracking. It feels absolutely weird to have no control, to feel like life is really uh, pushing you. It, it's really uh, revealing to you people's true intentions, their true colors, where you stand with people in their lives. Uh, it's very earth shattering and like I said, nerve wracking um, only because it, it's it's a, a complete revelation of where you're at at this point in time as always you guys know lunar eclipses always align us to our soul's purpose uh so this is because it is in your sign it is definitely going to be uh, a bit overwhelming um it's almost a feeling of being in panic mode uh see it as the universe helping you revealing to you guiding you at this point instead of seeing it as blockages uh, you can move much more faster and easier seeing it uh, from this perspective. Saturn's energy and influence will be affecting your home and family. It is about making decisions around the home or family and also feeling lack of support or assistance from those around you. Mars and Neptune in your house of creativity and risks uh, taking you uh, creative energy as well. Uh, this is innovative type of energy. Um, but it is also about, you know, enough to propel you to find solutions uh, that may be easy as stopping and making some time for meditation to think this uh, through. Uh, that's going to help you guys catapult you forward. But also remember Aquarius energy is currently influencing. Uh, it's always about group settings, those around us. And Saturn's energy is about learning to stand on your own two feet. It is about... Uh, bad making your bad decisions no longer being accepted. It's about uh, making yourself uh, self-priority. Uh, so the struggle or confusion may be something that you're experiencing already. Um, as an example, I have tons of clients that are Scorpios, uh, whether it's Scorpio sun or whether it's um, uh, Scorpio rising. And they're really being affected in many different aspects. Of course, it has a lot to do uh, with 
where you have these specific uh, big players, basically the planets, uh, where you have them in what part of your of your houses and the house itself. So it, it, that's what ultimately determines how much you're greatly going to be affected. But again, the family is a major theme right now. Family and those around you are those that rely on you. Um, you know, I've been experiencing a lot of clients, like I said, that are Scorpios and they are, you know, some have been experiencing almost the feeling of like getting to uh, experience a, a nervous breakdown or a mental breakdown. And it's not that it's actually happening. It's more so that the feeling of it, it's like you're at the tipping point. You are at a moment where there, there needs to be some type of decision makings because the decisions you've made in the past obviously are not working and it's about creating boundaries it's about um realizing where in what area in your life you're giving too much of yourself you're overextending and where in that area people have taken you for granted or have taken uh, advantage of that and it's you coming to the harsh reality of seeing things unravel to the point of uh you know, showing or the universe showing you, revealing to you, um, if you're struggling, are they reaching out? Are they checking on you? Are they willing to drive 40 minutes to get to you, uh, to get you out of like a, a, being a, you know, stranded because your car broke down and no, everyone's around and available, but no one wants to extend that uh, going out of their way. And it's like revealing to you for others, it could be uh, that health wise, you're experiencing a lot of health issues or health concerns. And those that you thought would be there for you are really revealing how they truly feel or uh, showing to you that they're not willing to even jump a little puddle for you. Uh, so all of this could be extremely chaotic type of energy. The beautiful thing in this is that the reason why you're being revealed this Scorpio is because they're aligning you to your soul's purpose. Yes, it is amazing uh, to be a very selfless person, to uh, go above and beyond for others, but you cannot take care of other people if you cannot take care of yourself. And if it gets to the point of being, like I said, overextending yourself, then the point of that is to draw the line to understand that you can no longer make uh, excuses for other people's behaviors. Uh, so this is very, very revealing type of energy and also, you know, straining on your mental, physical or spiritual level. Um, so again, you're definitely being challenged here. Uh, Aquarius energy, like I said, it's all about setting those around you, uh, the boundaries and Saturn's energy is about learning to stand on your own two feet. It's about making yourself a priority. So this struggle or confusion about doing for others that may be surrounding you, family, the home life, all the while feeling like you're mentally, physically, or spiritually exhausted. It is the viewing or seeing what is no longer working, what has pushed you to the verge of your limit and letting go uh, and releasing completely that old version of yourself to be able to align yourself uh, to better uh, align yourself, I should say, to the newer version of yourself, to uh, the more advanced, to the more wiser version of yourself. Now, when we're talking about love and romance, Pluto is making a beautiful sextile to your Neptune. Uh, new love is there for you. You just need to take the steps forward. Uh, if you've been feeling or telling yourself you haven't connected with anyone, or you can find anyone uh, that you connect with, uh, in turn, it may become, or you may see it as a blockage, you need to shift that energy. And the way of thinking, especially now because Mars is in that house too, and it's conjunct, uh, conjunct with Neptune, that's really pushing you forward into some new happy relationship. It's making um, a trine to the eclipse, which makes, uh, which means that it's making a shift of pivotal uh, momentum right now, do something different and love will come and find you or you will be able to find love. Uh, so it is about getting yourself out of that comfort zone and really putting yourself out there, Scorpio. All right, my lovelies, let's get into the cards. Let's see what the messages are for you guys here. Spirits, what are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Please give us two cards to represent the challenges or the message here, the lesson to be learned. Oh, give me one second. 
Okay, and we have the Hermit and the Five of Cups. So yeah, it's exactly what was being mentioned for you guys. The Hermit is aligning yourself to your soul's purpose, Scorpio. It is bringing the light back to yourself, finding yourself, going within yourself to figure out uh, taking stock and taking inventory in your every single aspect of your life, what's working, what's not working, releasing what no longer is working. With it, unfortunately, uh, it could be relationships. If you've been in a over 30 year old uh, relationship and things have been progressively going worse and worse and worse, it is coming to the culmination of that ending cycle. It is no longer fighting to hold on to it but letting go and trusting the universe that it will reveal to you the path that you should be on. Uh, the hermit is all about finding the answers that are within ourselves, our souls, uh, to, the, to, to the depthness of our soul. Um, you may be dealing or struggling with situations that uh, puts you in a very uncomfortable situation, right? Uh, for some of you guys, it could be dealing with, you know, with your parents, it could be dealing with your kids, it could be dealing with your husband, your wife, uh, anything that has to do with making you feel like you are in an uncomfortable situation because it it almost feels like an energy of having to choose you, your sanity over someone you love and someone that in the past you've done multiple excuses for. So it is the coming together uh, of your consciousness and subconscious, aligning your soul, uh, aligning yourself to your soul and realizing, is this draining the shit out of you? If it is, it's time to no longer deal with that and release it completely. Um, so heavy energy, Scorpio, but it is a beautiful transformative energy. Um, it is very, um, I know it could be overwhelming and it could feel like, you know, your emotions are just all over the place, but don't see it as blockages. See it as being grateful and being thankful because when we experience uh, uh, lunar eclipses on a very deeper level, when it's in our sign, it is revealing to us our soul's path. And a lot of the times we can get lost, we can get confused about things in our life um, because of our ego, because of our love, or because of our loyalty to others. Uh, but ultimately, we come into this earth, um, we are born, you know, in essence, by ourselves, uh, not discrediting our spirit guides and our ancestors that are always there to guide us. But we do come into this earth on our own. And the reason for that is because no one around you is going to experience life and the lessons the way you are. Everyone has a different soul's purpose. Uh, so that's something that you need to understand. Sometimes taking people out of their drama or, uh, you know, saving people from their craziness that they're creating themselves and and always getting them out of you know out of these situations in essence you are doing a disservice to yourself because you're overextending yourself and also you're doing a disservice to them because you cannot expect those that always need saving to figure out how to save themselves um, and that is a very harsh lesson. I myself am a Capricorn, so family and loyalty, it is extremely important. But sometimes we need to understand that if it comes down to people literally draining your soul's energy, literally affecting you in such a way, you have to let them go. Because if you don't, they will drown you in order for them to survive, okay? All right, my lovelies, I hope that you enjoyed this. Now let's go to... Sagittarius. Okay, my lovely Sagittarius, here we are, and your lunar eclipse is happening in your area of hidden things. That is your subconscious or unconscious reactions, the area of compulsion, the area of rest and recuperation, psychic abilities, and spirituality. Where this uh, major change needs to happen is slowing down and take more time to take care of yourself and your physical self uh, by getting more sleep or recuperating from something, but also being more aligned spiritually, listening to the universe, watching for signs, analyzing those things uh, that come 
uh, that come in looking in our subconscious habits uh, that you have desires to escape from things um, rather than to face them head on analyzing all of this is what's happening and changing in your life uh, right now and that's what's going to be uh, influencing you for the next coming months um, now Saturn challenging is uh, the thing that's getting in your way and Saturn is in your house of thinking communication uh, from yourself to others uh, but it can also represent communication within yourself this is self-talk the self-talk we have a tendency of doing whether it's positive or negative communicating or dealing with uh, negative people sometimes uh, these are putting you into a place of having issues in regards to growing and connecting on the spiritual level so all of this is an awakening in essence. It is a shakeup. It is the brutal slap in the face, waking up to what's really happening so that you can walk with purpose. Mars and Neptune, that is in your area of home and family. Family members are giving you the space, the permission, uh, even assisting, facilitating some things that you can get so that you can get rest, so that you can get recuperation. If you're currently going through a uh, some type of surgery or if you've been uh, coming out of a surgery and you've been going through a healing process uh, you may find that your family friends relatives those people around you are more inclined to want to assist you to want to help you um, recuperation guiding you to make a deeper connection spiritually on something around the home uh, you may find yourself moving stuff around moving furniture uh, there's always this burst of energy for having to need to move the energy around. Uh, and this is happening all in a subconscious level. So uh, if one day you wake up and you start moving your furniture or you decide to clean it, clear out your closet or you decide to uh, maybe incorporate some type of feng shui uh, to, to, to help you. Um, and like I said, you're doing this from a very unconscious level, subconscious level, I should say. Um, and it is, in essence, what it is, it's uh, wanting to direct the energy to flow more uh, organically around you, whether this is uh, metaphorically speaking, whether this is in the physical level, in the spiritual level. Uh, a lot of people have a tendency of starting to uh, decorate their home uh, using feng shui, uh, as an example, uh, could, because it is connected to the home. Uh, where you feel safe for some of you guys you may find yourself wanting to create sacred space uh, meditating being more proactive you may find yourself creating an altar a special place to read your bible for example a place for meditation the need and desire to connect to the spirit realm um, so again you have to keep in mind a lot of the times when we're dealing with things that are very heavy or very difficult for us sometimes uh, we may try to use things um and this is all being triggered on a subconscious level keep in mind it is the house of impulse so uh, you may be inclined to run away from your issues or run away from your problems and this is something you've been doing for a while uh, with this lunar eclipse it is no longer having the incline to do so but instead it is about finding your own peace of mind and that is again in connection with your home with your family with those around you with yourself it is creating that sacred space that peace of mind uh, whereas in the past you were more inclined to run away from your problems you are now being pushed to face the consequences or face the issues that are unfolding in your life head on it is about trusting yourself it is about you know no longer running away from problems but facing them and facing the reality of things it is in essence kind of uh, becoming more dominant uh, to your weaknesses or to your protective habits uh, whether it's a, in a toxic trait or in a positive uh, but you're being more aware of that so very transformative energy very beautiful energy because um, on the grander scale of things you're becoming more self-aware you're becoming more in control therefore taking uh, your power back no longer allowing others to make you feel a certain way um, it is about you finding your truth it is about you standing your ground it is about you facing issues head-on it is about you connecting to your spirituality um, 
so that you can find a harmonious balance uh, within yourself, uh, as we would call it, uh, to find the balance within the temple, inside and out, which is our, our physical body, um, our spiritual, our consciousness, our collective with others as well. So again, major transformative energy. Now, when we're talking about love and romance, Mars is not making an aspect with Jupiter. However, Jupiter is in the house of uh, uh, in that house and Venus is there as well, possibly feeling like someone is pursuing you, trying to romance you, trying to seduce you. You may feel like you're not ready or you just may be oblivious to not picking up on their signs or uh, you may want to go out with uh, someone and it just doesn't seem to unfold because they may be busy or out of town. Uh, so these energies are feeling a little bit of disconnection happening. Um, may, as an example, you may find yourself connecting with someone in the oncoming uh, weeks or even months uh, where the connection is amazing. And then all of, out of nowhere, uh, you try to connect with them or go out with them again. And for some reason, uh, there is a disconnection, meaning there is an uh, energy or essence of unavailability. It could be that um, you know, you hit it off with them. And then when you try to hang out again, it just seems like you have other things that pop up or they feel like they are dealing with other things that are popping up, uh, kind of feeling like, uh, universe is pulling you guys apart only temporarily, however. Um, so just keep in mind and be patient. If you are going through that, try to connect, um, with yourself again with the energies of yourself uh, like i said it, it's just a feeling of like being overly busy on both aspects whether you or the person that's coming in um and like i said it could be that you guys hit it off amazing um and it just doesn't seem to unfold because they may be busy or they take up uh going out of town whether it's for business or whether it's for pleasure um feeling a little bit of disconnection there uh, try to connect or give them more time to figure out what's going on with them um, and, and give yourself time as well. Don't rush into anything. Uh, romance after two weeks from this lunar eclipse is going to be pretty good for you guys. So again, if you do experience some type of uh, disconnect or some type of like a feeling of a missed opportunity because everything was going well and then they, you know, have to go out of the country or out of town because of business or whatever doesn't mean that that's not going to pick up it just means that there's a feeling of disconnect right now so all right let's get into your reading let's see what spirit has for you guys spirits what are the messages for sagittarius sun moon rising and venus what is the general message here for this lunar eclipse for them what challenge opportunity or message you have for them at this point in time sagittarius sun moon rising and venus all right here we go and our first card here is the five of arrows which is the five of swords um again it is a discord type of energy it is more and and this is something that the planets are definitely going to be influencing like i said for some of you guys it's no longer wanting to deal with negative people or people that drain your energy or that you feel are holding you back um, whereas in the past, perhaps uh, you were kind of inclined to hold on to that or to make up even excuses for other people. At this point in time, it's like you're understanding that it is wasted time. It's like beating um, beating a dead horse. Uh, and it, there's uh, this push of self-awareness where you're no longer going to be dealing with that type of energy or with ego if there is ego involved with other people that you are working with or surrounding yourself with um now you do have here the ten of pentacles again it is stability it is you finding harmonious balance in every single aspect of your life to be able to find the balance and again ten of pentacles is always yes abundance and stability but in essence, it represents family and family dynamic. Keep in mind that uh, family energy, that that family uh, house um, is definitely going to be influencing you guys with this lunar eclipse. So um, it's about pulling away from those that are toxic, even if they're friends, if loved ones, even partners um, at this point in time, you're being pushed uh, to take self-responsibility, to no longer uh, rely on others or to no longer allow others to rely on you. 
Um, it is about self-awareness and spiritual growth here for you, Sagittarius. Also, don't be surprised if that connection uh, that may feel like there is some type of discord, discord or disconnect, I should say, um, it could be something that comes back around uh, only to bear fruit of that. So only to become more solidified. So what I mean by that is if in the past there was a connection uh, with someone where you felt like things were great or you guys hit it off or for some reason there was a separation and it's more of not to do with them or with you. It had more to do with like destiny, the way destiny was playing out in both your lives. Don't be surprised if this person uh, reaches out or if you bump uh, into them and you're able to pick that up again because 10 of pentacles does indicate uh, stability but more than stability it is the uh, whatever cr created some type of distancing um, is going to be removed uh, because it was something that was needed at that point in time keep in mind lunar eclipses are always aligning us to our soul's purpose uh, so if there are, uh, as an example, the example I just made, if this person is meant to be in your life, perhaps there was something that you had to go through in order to release yourself so that you can move forward. Uh, or this person could have been dealing with that themselves. They had to release themselves from something uh, to be able to align, to, to be able to come together in better alignment. We are talking about alignments here. We're talking about balance. So um, just keep that in mind, my lovelies. Okay, so let's go now to Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn, you are experiencing this lunar eclipse in your area of friendships, groups, organizations, and the future. So this is where decisions are being made. Uh, you may feel like there is a decision to be made regarding a friendship, deciding whether to leave a group or an organization. Um, for some of you guys, it could be stepping down from a position or maybe take on more responsibility, uh, maybe even start a group or some type of organization here. Uh, this is a decision about your future and what you're going to be doing long term, looking into your life, uh, taking stock, inventory. Um, figuring things out basically is what's unfolding. You may already be experiencing this uh, Capricorn, but this is the theme that is going to be uh, playing out for you guys for the next coming six months. Uh, Saturn is challenging you in the area of money and self-worth. Uh, you may be challenged feeling like you don't have enough money to do what you want to do or that you don't have the earning capacity to make it happen or the feeling of not being uh, deserving of the things that you have or you want. Uh, however, you're getting help and assistance with Mars and Neptune in your house of communication. This means thinking things differently, asking really good questions, getting information from others, getting advice. This is where you're going to be, um, you're going to pull information to help you get through that blockage. Uh, so that you can do things that you want to do in the future. So on the grander scale of things, the theme that is going to be unfolding for you is about uh, constantly figuring out what you're planning to do or what you're wanting to do for the future. This is making movements, making changes. Um, for some of you guys, this could be, you know, uh, communities and, and people surrounding you could also represent or impact your business. So for some of you guys, it could be analyzing, um, as an example, if you are a business owner and you've been at it for many, many years and you may be trying to deliberate if it's time for you to retire, if it's time for you to put that burden or that responsibility on someone else, uh, because there's other things that you want to experience. So uh, it is about the desire of wanting to experience or wanting to do things, um, but making decisions now that are going to affect that future or that are going to allow you or assist you in making that happen. So again, for some of you guys, it could be stepping down uh, certain positions where there's a lot of responsibility and um, because you're preparing for some of you guys, you may uh, experience uh, dealing or having or picking up on an intern or someone that you're wanting to uh, train and teach uh, for others of you if you're on the younger scale uh, it could be you becoming an intern going towards or working with someone 
that is getting ready to step down, that is wanting to take you under their wing and assist you and give you all that knowledge. So it is about essentially the future and the things that you want to make happen that you want to do, but it's making decisions in the now so that you're able to do that in the future. Uh, for others of you, it could be, like I said, if you've been working for an organization, for some of you guys, it could be that you're walking away from that because you're starting your own organization um, or taking on something uh, more uh, propense um, to put you on the path that you're wanting uh, to be in the future. So again, a lot of changes that are happening there. Um, and again, keep in mind, it has a lot to do with, uh, you know, with your earning capacity. For some of you guys, you may be challenged in the aspect of, uh, as an example, applying for a job or a position um, where they're asking or expecting some type of education or some type of experience. And you may have one, but lack the other. So you may question, should I even apply? You may uh, even doubt yourself here. And what, you know, what they're wanting to, uh, for you to fully embrace is, uh, the acceptance, because a lot of the times, if we don't believe that we're capable of doing something, and then we move forward in making that happen, you've already made the choice. You've already subconsciously decided you're going to fail, or you're not going to be able to get that job, or, or whatever it is. And it does come back directly to what you believe you deserve. Now, for others of you, it could be that you're experiencing uh, like a strike of luck, or things going extremely well, well for you. And there is this feeling of, do I deserve it? Have I worked hard enough for it? And I know for Capricorns, nothing comes easy to you guys, but when things start to go good for you, you kind of question what's going on. Like, why isn't there no resistance? Why is it so easy? And you go to this uh, snowball effect of being very self-doubtful or doubting yourself or feeling, again, like you don't deserve the good things. So. Uh, what they're telling you here, it, it's about overcoming that mental blockage. Um, now, when we're talking about love and romance, Saturn is not making an aspect with Venus. However, the Sun and Uranus are in the house, uh, in that house. It is possible that you're meeting someone through some circumstance uh, that are not coming together right away. So you could be meeting someone through social media, talking to someone on the phone, texting uh, someone, but not actually physically meeting them yet. Um, or for others of you, you do meet the person and in the very next week, they take a flight to Egypt, uh, something because they have business or on a pleasure trip, whatever it is. So there are some things that is keeping you from making a solid connection at this point in time. Uh, so you just want to wait until these energies line up for you. Um, so not that it is, you know, insinuating, um, that you won't have, uh, that things will not pan out is just a feeling of disconnect right now, a, a bit of resistance in that aspect. Um, so, uh, with that being said, let's go into your reading. Let's see what the messages are for you guys. Again, for those of you guys that are interested in this tarot deck, hit the, uh, description box below. You'll be able to find the link on there. And if you are wanting to place an order, definitely use the uh, coupon code Pinky Pink Star Doll. Um, so, okay, let's get into it. All right, so your first card here is the Devil card and the King of Wands. This is your energy, uh, Capricorn. And we all know Saturn uh, is a very challenging energy, a very challenging planet. But because it is your ruling planet, you're coming on very strong. And again, we go back to that of making plans for the future. Um, think outside the box, Capricorn. And the best advice I can tell you guys is think big. Uh, why? Because every time Saturn is influencing you, uh, yes, it will challenge. It will not come at, uh, easy. Success will not come easy. But it doesn't mean that Saturn will not assist you in making that happen. It is your planet. It is your father planet. Um, so all it wants is for you to be clear on what it is that you want to be able to solidify that. So again, uh, with the devil and the king of wands, it is about being on point when it comes to believing in yourself. It is about being confident. It, it, it's about, I know that oftentimes 
um, even dealing with people that from a, from a glance you you see them or view them as extremely confident everyone has off days and i don't care who tells you otherwise if they tell you they're always perfect or they're always confident they're full of shit. let me let me burst that bubble real quick because we're all challenged we're humans and we all experience a human uh, we're having a human experience where there is days where we're going to feel extremely luscious, extremely uh, excited, extremely passionate. And then there's days where you're just going to feel like, blah. Um, but it's about faking it till you make it. When we're talking about learning to teach yourself, to raise your vibration and being more confident in yourself in knowing what you bring to the table. And the devil card is exactly that. It is the energy of your own power, Capricorn, showing up in your reading with the king of wands. It is trusting uh, your it's trusting yourself and being confident in what you're capable of making. No one in this world can tell you you cannot make something happen because if you put determination and dedication into that, it is inevitable that you will manifest that, that you will achieve that success or that you will achieve uh, whatever you whatever you're trying to make happen. Um, we are the only ones that set our own limits. Uh, so with the King of Wands, it is about uh, really being empowered, uh, Capricorn, but more than being empowered is about believing wholeheartedly without a doubt that you are worthy, whether it's of success, whether it's of love, whether it's of financial stability, whether it's of happiness, whatever it is. Um, it is about believing in it and knowing it without a doubt that it's going to happen. Why? Because you're the only one that can choose um, whether you are accepting it whether you're capable whether you are deserving no one else no outside uh energy or interference uh can affect that uh you're the one that decides you're the one that sets your own limitations capricorn all right my lovelies okay i hope you guys enjoyed now let's go to aquarius okay aquarius this lunar eclipse is happening at the top of your chart in the house of career and reputation Something may be changing in your career, perhaps getting a new job, changes within the company itself at a higher level. So for example, some of you guys, you may experience a boss being transferred to a new department. For others of you, you may be experiencing some type of promotion opportunity or working from someone, um, working from uh, being, uh, as an example, if you run your own business, uh, for some of you guys, it could be walking away from that and deciding to better partner up or work with someone else or work in a corporate uh, instead of being in the self-employment uh, for others of you guys it could be uh, starting your own business uh, or maybe you've had a business like i said and you decide that you want to work for someone else changes unfolding for the next six months which means decisions that are going to be ma uh, made made uh, you're going to be experiencing a bit of resistance with Saturn in your own sign of Aquarius, sometimes feeling um, perhaps not confident, doubting your skills, feeling like you don't have the right connections. Uh, that's this negative self-talk that we've been talking about for other signs. And the blockage that you're currently going through or that you will be going through is the feeling of not being ready for something. Uh, whether it's feeling like you're not ready to start your own business uh, for others of you if you did start your own business it's uh, the doubting process like am i even capable of making this happen again self-negative talk um, but you do have to be able to that's the quickest incline right you're going to be pulled towards being or doing that uh, negative self-talk uh, but what they're telling you here it's to rise above that aquarius and um mars and neptune is uh, to understand on that deeper level what you value or what your value is and what you're offering. Neptune's saying you definitely have a lot to offer. It's the trusting and believing in yourself that you're definitely ready or that you're definitely capable of making things happen. Um, and then also the gaining of the skills or uh, really being able to proactively sharpen those skills. Uh, it's not about the experience that you have already. It is more to do with the willingness to get the experience or the needed uh, of yourself to align yourself to a higher vibration. It is the willingness and enthusiasm and excitement about your self-worth and your capabilities. So this could affect all of you guys in many different ways. 
Um, but ultimately it comes down to trusting and believing in yourself. You're going to be challenged in regards to what you feel you deserve or what you feel that you're capable or not capable of. And again, we go back to the message that was given to Capricorn. Uh, you're the only one that can decide uh, what you're capable of doing, Aquarius. No one can tell you that. No one, even if the whole world doubts you and you are committed and determined, you will make it happen. And that's where, again, understanding that Saturn's energy, Aquarius is the collective, it is the outside, right? It is the others around me. It is all of that uh, being influenced. And Saturn's energy is about standing on your own two feet. It is about trusting yourself. It is about uh, coming into uh, your evolved uh your evolved and aligned purpose it is about being clear and concise about what you're great at and honing that or if you are trying to master something it is about delving deep into it and submerging yourself to it to really learn to master that but not to be quick and uh just you know be not to be uh quick in putting yourself in, I would never be able to do this, or I would never be able to do that. It is about trusting and knowing that you're capable of doing it and making it happen, Aquarius. So ultimately, Saturn wants you to, to stand on your own two feet. Saturn wants you to be more disciplined in how you learn and how you master uh, certain things that are helping you become the better version of yourself. Um, and again, we go back to that of not allowing outside interference uh, to affect or to determine how we feel about ourselves within ourselves. So it, it's about learning to allow your inner voice and your GPS and your intuition within you to become stronger than those naysayers or those outside of you that are interfering or that could be negative or that could be triggering your fears, your doubts. It's learning to shut them out and listening more to the little voice within you that is telling you you're capable of making things happen. Now, when we're talking about love and romance, Mercury is not making an aspect with Uranus and Mercury is in retrograde. So the likelihood of getting together with someone you've dated in the past um, is very highlighted here. Uh, or someone that you just, um, you know, went out on a date once, uh, something that has to do with someone from the past uh, is definitely coming up. Um, feeling like you have blinders on even or thinking about someone from the past, even if you met someone uh, or you're currently dealing with someone, you may be uh, kind of nostalgic or fantasizing about a previous connection uh, that you had with someone. Uh, they would be so much more like this person from the past. So what I mean by that is for some of you guys, if you recently started putting yourself out there or dating or on the dating scene, uh, you may actually find that there is a person that's coming in or that you're dealing with that may remind you or that have a lot of the qualities or characteristics of the person from the past that you're still emotionally attached to. Um, or you could find yourself comparing <laughs> on the negative aspect. Um, so it, it's kind of like uh, putting blinders and, and like, I'm not going to pay attention to the fact that they have the same hairstyle or that they're dressing the same or that they are doing the same profession or something that is very similar to the person from the past because you're very excited about it. Um, but it's the realizing if you actively pursue a person that is very similar to someone from your past, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're constantly going to be reminded of that person. So you're kind of not over it. Um, and for others of you, if it is in fact the situation of uh, dealing with someone that is, or that you catch yourself constantly comparing uh, people that you're going out with, with a person that perhaps you're still emotionally invested in the past, you're, they're never gonna meet that criteria. Uh, this is something that I always tell everyone, whenever we go on this thing where we're comparing, where we're, you're coming from a point of fantasy, 
uh, where you've put them up in a pedestal. So they're never going to be able, or others, I should say, are never, never going to be able to compete against that image. Not necessarily because that's who they are. It's just that you've placed them there and you're seeing them or viewing them from a place of nostalgia. So of course, they're going to be much better versions of who they really were or how they really treated you. So be careful with that Aquarius. All right, my lovelies, now let's get to the cards. Let's see what the message is here for you guys. Whoops. Oh, all these cards flipped. Okay, and... Okay, let's see what's going on. What is the message here for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? What is this lunar eclipse? Wow, you guys have cards just flying out so we have the eight of wands here a lot of communication uh this could be communication this could be social media this could be um communicating or someone reaching out to you and we also we go back to the same conversation of comparing uh passion being around you or desire to move forward is present uh, it is moving forward in a very quick way, uh, but often looking at it from a very nostalgic place, from a place of feeling like um, a place of uh, missing the person or missing uh, something from the past where it came to some type of halt or some type of ending. Um, and you're looking at it from a perspective of missing and what they're telling you here with the Scorpio energy, it is time to completely release yourself from that cycle. You can't fully move on or experience uh, the present and what is unfolding here now if you're constantly looking to the past. So when we're talking about relationships and partnerships, you're never going to find someone uh, that is exactly the person you loved from the past. And if you go out choosing um, consciously to look for those traits in other people, it will always be a disappointment because obviously it's not the same person. So there is a need for you to completely release yourself from the past. It's time to move on, Aquarius, is basically what they're telling you. All right, my lovelies, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Now let's go to Pisces. All right, my lovelies, here we are. Finally, last but not least, Pisces. This lunar eclipse is happening in your area of travel, foreign things, education, legal matters, and belief, your faith. This is the areas that can change or will be transformed. This could be decisions uh, or making decisions around going back to school, decisions about where you want to live, if that includes leaving outside of this country. Uh, this could be dealing with import, export businesses, long distance relationships with someone uh, who is in a foreign country for some, decisions about legal matters, a closer look at how you're dealing with your faith, uh, the rules that you have uh, for yourself, basically. Saturn challenging uh, in your house of unconscious things, fears, nightmares, uh, where you get blocked or where there may be some resistance or feeling like there's blockages uh, is based on fear of all the things that can happen. This is negative self-talk. Uh, however, where you have the help that's coming in, uh, Mars in your own sign of Pisces and Neptune in your own sign uh, in your area of confidence. Uh, if you take action and move forward in a confident manner, um, even if you're not feeling as confident as uh, it is about vibrating to that energy, it is redirecting the energy. It is about self-doubt, Pisces. Um, so I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're going to be experiencing for the next coming six months, situations and circumstances that put you in positions of feeling like uh, you're doubting yourself or constantly uh, giving yourself self-negative talk. Am I capable of making this happen? Um, am I worthy of this? Am, do I deserve this? Um, questioning everything that has to do with like the fears, basically. And it's fears, uh, fears. <laughs> it's fears of things that are not yet happening. This is all happening in your mind. 
Uh, so it is about, uh, again, like I said, vibrating to a higher energy. It's redirecting that negative energy towards positive, uh, believing in yourself and being confident, fake it till you make it um, type of energy. Things will definitely come out to the best of your interest and will be beneficial for you. It's about moving forward with confidence in yourself that you can handle anything that life throws your way. So it's not necessarily a negative aspect. It has more to do with uh, learning to overpower our negative talk or our negative self-talk. It is about uh, choosing every single day uh, to be more optimistic and more positive instead of allowing the fears uh, to come up or to take over uh, therefore manifesting or giving to you that negative outcome. Uh, so it's going to be crucial. You're definitely going to be tested in the sense of uh, mind over matter, uh, Pisces. It's the best way I can describe it. Um, it is about, you know, training our thoughts and our mind uh, to let go or release of negative traits about ourselves. You know, negative talk could be very damaging. Um, it could, you know, set the course when we're talking about relationships, set the course of allowing to choose very toxic partners because we ourselves are extremely toxic or we feel like we are undeserving to be treated right or to be treated like a queen or like a king. Um, so, you know, overseeing or overlooking um, certain people's traits and behaviors because we feel uh, that that's solely all we deserve so it's about rebuilding what you've been taught from past life or not past life sorry from early childhood um what your beliefs are when we're talking about relationships when we're talking about success when we're talking about money when we're talking about health when we're talking about those around us and it is like i said mind over matter the easiest way i can put it for you guys now when we're talking about love and romance a uh, beautiful aspect. The moon is making a trine to Neptune and Mars is right there as well. Uh, so you have a lot of positive energy for meeting someone. Um, uh, someone because uh, Mars is there. Uh, he can act as both you're finding someone, but also because it's a trine and Mars is there. They could find, uh, find you. That means just... Um, Put your information out there. Um, you know, basically what they're telling you here is you're capable of manifesting and drawing in love. You just have to be more vocal about it. So it's uh, taking action. It's putting the word out there. It's telling your friends you're open and ready to be going on blind dates. It's uh, putting it out to the universe that you're ready for love, that you're ready and open to receiving love. Um it is about just preparing yourself and, like I said, putting yourself out there, even if it means uh, creating a online dating app uh, or online dating profile, um, basically to get the raw uh, to get the ball rolling. Uh, so you are definitely uh, going to be inclined to put your information out there, um, and you know, like I said, be open and ready for love. The universe will take care of the rest, my lovelies. All right, Pisces, let's get into your cards. Let's see what is the message here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What changes, challenges, or opportunities are coming to them for this lunar eclipse? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay, here we go. And the first card here is the High Priestess. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Pisces. High Priestess is connecting with your uh, subconscious. It is connecting with your intuition, embracing your intuition, being honest with what has been revealed or what will be revealed to you. Uh, this including relationships, friends, people around you. Uh, this is accepting what the universe is showing you right now. Um, and you have the Ten of Cups. So uh, sorry, nine of cups. So this is uh, wish fulfillment and the wish fulfillment comes through um, knowing that you deserve it or knowing that you're ready for whatever happiness and joy and passion and 
energetic energy is going to be unfolding for you whatever it is that you're wanting to make happen or you're wanting to manifest it comes down to uh, listening and tuning into your conscious and subconscious it is aligning it is fully embracing uh the beautiful qualities that you have uh, your intuition psychic abilities uh, manifestations law of attraction it is about doing what you have to do to be able to attract exactly what it is that you're wanting to bring to you my lovely so um you know nine of cups is wish fulfillment it is emotional fulfillment it is balance it is happiness it is joy and abundance so you're able and capable of making that happen if you learn to connect with your spirituality all right my lovelies i hope you guys enjoyed all these uh, uh not videos <laughs> all these uh readings for every single one of you guys i hope you guys uh enjoyed i hope it gives you as much information as i could uh, to help this lunar eclipse and to help you uh, better experience the next coming six months um want to wish you guys the very best and we'll see each other soon till then bye